In this lesson, we're going to talk all about managing fear and anxiety in toddlers and school-age children. As a child grows, so does their heightened sense of imagination. And as parents, we always want to do our best to support the needs of our children and balance it with whether it's a habit or a true need that they have. When I work with children who have some aspect of fear and anxiety, it's important that we create consistency in a bedtime routine and consistency in our response overnight to properly balance a fear or anxiety. In many toddlers and school age children who have a fear of the dark, something as simple as a soft Himalayan sea salt lamp is one of my own personal favorite solutions because it's a dimmable, soft pink light that a child can use in their room and they're relatively inexpensive. I also really love projectables. They project a nice character up onto the ceiling and then after your child falls asleep, you can sneak into their room and turn it so that just the little bulb is lit enough that they can see and get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, but not enough that it's causing a disturbance or putting too much ambient light in a room. You also wanna talk with your child about how and what that fear is that they have and try to understand is it a legitimate fear or something they're using as a stalling tactic or a way to sneak into your bed there's a balance with that as a parent i always want to make sure my children are not fearful but i also want to sniff out whether they're doing something as a behavior and i'll give you a great example maybe your child at home every night wakes up because they're afraid of something maybe they hear a noise or the heater kicking on but then they go to grandma's and they're perfectly fine I'll tell you, that's probably a habit waking. And they're using the excuse because you went in and said, hey, are you afraid of the heater kicking on? And they went, well, wait a minute. If I'm afraid of the heater kicking on, does that mean I get to come in bed with you, right? So it's really important to sniff that kind of stuff out. Inside of my resources section, there is something in there that is a bedroom exercise. So you will see it in the resources section and you can actually work with your toddler or school age child to try to sniff out things without giving them ideas, but with understanding and isolating if something is causing an anxiety or fear. As children grow, their friendships do as well as their imagination. Kids are exposed to additional peer pressure at school, sadly to say bullying and a lot of different things as their world grows and changes. This exercise can be helpful in finding some of those things that may be bothersome to them without them being forthright and coming out to talk to you about it. Another great exercise to sniff out fear and anxiety as your child has the ability to write or draw is going to be journaling. Have your child journal. Sometimes their pictures can tell you a lot more than their words. So if your child is still at an age where they can't quite write but they can draw, sometimes you can use that to sniff out a fear. You can also use writing as a way to communicate with your child. If they're not super open to talking with you, but you have a sense that there's something else going on, have them write it in the journal and make it be a place that's safe. They can write what their fears and anxieties are with your permission to read it. Some kids are going to write in their journal and they don't want you reading it. That's a respect and a boundary that you have to have with your child and not sneak in and read it. But the alternative is to also say, hey, you can write it in this book. It's a safe place and I will read it. And they understand that. And it can be a way that a child who may not be good at communicating with you has the ability to communicate. So through those simple exercises of the bedroom bedtime exercise of the journaling or the drawing, you can sometimes sniff out fear or anxiety. You can also talk to your child about what exactly is going on to see if it's a deeper issue that needs to be addressed. Fear and anxiety in our children can be very hard. I personally had some medical challenges with cancer and my son thought because everyone was sick now in the middle of a pandemic that mommy was going to die. That's heartbreaking as a parent on a personal level. I really struggled with my son and him going to bed every night thinking that he was going to wake up and I wasn't going to be there. I actually purchased a product. It's probably one of my favorite that you're going to see a lot more of in the Sleep Coach on Call program called a Zenimal. And it is a mindset and meditation device that is screen free. I love when my children ask every night to do their meditations because it's helpful for them to calm down. 
I wanted to take a minute to show you this animal because I believe so strongly in this product and what it has done for our family. There are nine meditations on here. Creativity, empathy, sleep, stillness, breath. It teaches children of all ages how to use mindfulness and their breath to calm fear and anxiety. The other thing I love about it is there's a little jack here. So they can plug in headphones and listen on the school bus. They can take it with them on a field trip or to camp as a way to calm and to use their breath and to use this exercise to create that sense of calm at bedtime. We do this every night in my children's room without fail for both of my kids. And it has really brought a sense of calm to our life. It has managed our fear and anxiety and even on a personal level allowed me 10 or 15 minutes every night to get in touch with my own breath and to be calm and to reflect on things in this crazy world that I normally wouldn't have time to have dealt with. So I encourage you to talk to your children about their fear, to talk with them about their anxiety and to understand, is it truly an issue that may need additional support from a professional or is it something that they're just using as a mechanism to get back into your bed? So it's important to balance those two things. Our job as parents is to support our children in the best way that we can. And so I encourage you to assess the situation, to build strong and emotional ties with your children, but to do so with boundaries. And remember, if it's a deeper rooted fear or anxiety challenge, I encourage you to speak to your pediatrician and to seek additional support from the many resources and parenting professionals who are out there who can deal with your child's specific needs.